Sequels are some of the most fun things in gaming, and the Switch is such a right platform for sequels because Nintendo has always elevated its franchises with their new entries on the platform, and now in year four, it's time for so many sequels to start rolling through at the recent events that have announced new titles in this summer of digital delights. We got Gone or Two, Serial Cleaners, some indies coming through Clutch. But today we're talking about all the big titles that are going to get sequels on Switch in 2020 and games that could probably get sequels on 2020. I'm joined by my sequel, Gabe. What's up, man? I'm your sequel if your life went bad. I feel like it. I feel like I'm the oh, I'm feel like I'm the OG Switch Force host, and then you're you're the sequel. I mean, we were there day one together, but it's okay. I'll be your sequel. Why not? I'm I'm also a little older. Yes, you are older. I got I got like ten months on you, which isn't. Let me know. Wait, oh, hold on. Give me a second. Which isn't apparent visually, but yes, no. Zach is older. Yeah. I'm, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the Switch Force Papa. Let me know in the comments down below what sequel you want most on Switch this year. And hit that like button if you guys enjoy sequels on Switch. We're talking about some big ones. And we're going to jump right into the biggest. I know you guys are hyped for this. Breath of the Wild 2. This is a game that has been unveiled last year at E3. It's a game that has a chance of coming out this year. It might also release early next year. But the word on the street, the rumor, is that a new trailer is coming soon. I really hope so. And I have opposing views as far as when this game is coming. I hope you're right. You know, you know, I love Zelda. Big and, holiday time. And I'll mention this because there's a lot of new people that here that don't know me. I have a Triforce tattoo on my body somewhere. So uh, cool. Zel- Zelda is kind of my thing. Uh, I would love we, we have a we have a, we have a Triforce inspired logo. Yeah, I'm wearing a Switch Triforce Force. on my shirt somewhere. Look at that, man. Yeah. Pretty nice OG merch. Um, this was the OG Switch game. Really, obviously, made a ton of waves, and I think the sequel is an opportunity for them to merge the different stylistic approaches to the franchise. Now, Nintendo has released Breath of the Wild and Link's Awakening, two totally different Zelda-type games. This one could be the merging of the minds. I don't expect any top-down sections, but bringing dungeons into the open-ended style of Breath of the Wild, that's what I want. The important- I, I, I love the first 10 hours of Breath of the Wild, <laughs> and then I started to fall off a bit. Yeah, the important question with, with Breath of the Wild 2, or whatever they end up calling it, which it might not even be called that because they just call it the sequel. So whatever that ends up being, how similar is it? Like, is it mm. the exact same map? Which, eh, And you have to imagine that they have to do some things to differentiate it. People don't want to buy the, the exact same game. So it's just a balancing act of how much new they do. It's a brand new game, but it's set in the same world. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's got to be at least most of the same map. And I think the early talk was that it was going to be a modified map with extra areas and then a heavy focus on dungeons, which I think would be great. The real question to me about making this a sequel is, is there two characters that are allowed to be played at the same time? Wait, what? Are you talking like co-op? Co- I mean, the intro trailer that we saw features both Link and Zelda and... And a cutscene. Powering, so? <laughs> powering up Zelda to a playable character would be perfect. Nintendo had, look, look how they've taken their games. Mario Odyssey is a bigger, better Mario. Breath of the Wild, a bigger, better Zelda. Now an opportunity to start sequelizing franchises that grew on Switch. Grow them even more. Co-op in Breath of the Wild would be amazing. I disagree. <laughs> what? I don't want co-op. You disagree? I don't, no? want co- I don't want co-op in my Zelda experience. Oh, Gabe, I love. We run around together. I'll, I'll, I'll even be Zelda. You can be Link. There's a million games where we can run around together. I'm cool. Let me play Zelda on my own. But, but I, I, I could be in the minority there. Definitely let us know in the comments. Like, do you want to play Zelda with other people? I don't. Nah, I'm good. I, I think Nintendo will have a major title to compete this holiday season. I know the Mario remasters, which, by the way, they're, they're sort of sequels, but at the same time, they're almost like. They're Re- sequels, reverse sequels. Yeah, they're not sequels. Uh, <laughs> they're just... So that that doesn't really count, but I, we do know those are coming, and I, I feel like Nintendo will have something more for the holiday season, something brand new. And it's been three and a half years, so Breath of the Wild 2 is one that could definitely be there. A game that we know 100% is going to be their game, Hollow Knight Silk Song. This title is coming. Team Cherry has been hard at work on this. Hollow Knight is one of the best indies on Switch, and it has such a darling story. It was surprise dropped on E3 Day, back when we got to go to E3. <laughs> Hang out together in LA. Um, Corona. This game, I have a feeling that this game, while never given a set launch window, I have a feeling that this game was supposed to be out by now. It, it would make sense. And that's a long time ago. Mm-hmm. So I, I thought it would have been out by now. I don't I don't know what's going on. Hollow Knight reviewed very, very well. Sold very, very well. You would think that they would want to get this thing out there as soon as possible. 
I, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if, if there was, you know, real world events that maybe had an effect on it or just development issues or maybe it's just way bigger. I mean, it's going to be bigger, but maybe they're doing some crazy stuff over there. I have no idea, but it has to be soon, right? They started off with this as an expansion to Hollow Knight and then it grew and grew and then new character and all that. So they wanted to craft into its own game. And yeah, at this point, I imagine it's got to be massive. Hollow Knight to me is of the caliber of the top tier of Switch eShop titles, but the top ones, but it doesn't necessarily get the same praise because it didn't originate on Switch. So Hollow Knight Silksong originating on Switch, does it have what it takes to compete with the likes of Celeste and Katana Zero? Probably. Probably. Yeah? Yeah. And this is such a bigger experience. Like Celeste is amazing, but it's like a short, like little game, right? Well, oh, you can make that long if you want. You go them B-sides, them yeah, C-sides. Yeah, no, no, I know, but- If but, you have the skills. Yeah, so you have to imagine it's a much bigger game. It is a bigger game. And, I, you know, it, it's weird because now we don't really have the normal direct, indie direct cycle. Nintendo also like doesn't like to show things twice in that way. Where does this come? It would have been a great E3 surprise drop game again, <laughs> but I feel like this one deserves a little more fanfare. So maybe sometime early fall. Uh, it seems like it could fit in nicely in like the September range. I don't know that they need a full cycle of hype, but I hope it does come soon. Now, speaking of something that we'd love to come soon because we've been waiting a while, Mario plus Rabbids 2. <laughs> what is Team Davide up to at Ubisoft? We know that the UB Forward event is going to be in July. Ubisoft has to have something for Switch, and they've got Gods and Monsters, which is great, an original IP. It, Man, if Breath of the Wild 2 doesn't come out, hey, at least you got Gods wait, and Monsters. Wait, hold on. Gods and Monsters is an original IP, but it's not an original IP. We, we saw that this <laughs> demo leaked on, like, Stadia or something. <laughs> that is, that is, that is Cough of the Wild. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness gracious, it looks similar. Yeah. Mario plus Rabbids 2, though. To make it not so similar, I would love to see Ubisoft, which th th they used to be one of the best supporters of Switch, and I feel like they have wavered, so I hope that they come back strong in July with their UB Forward event. And I'm, I'm down for Zelda plus Rabbids Dungeon Battle. That would be amazing. That would be absolutely amazing. What are, give me three characters that, that you want the, the Rabbids to, to take over, you know, cause, cause Link oh, will be gosh. the one, right? And, and you can have Zelda, but, but then wh what do you want? I mean, Rabbit Ganon, obviously. That's like a, oh, hey, a, a go-to okay. pick. Yeah. Rabbit Sheik. Okay. One more. And uh, we'll go Breath of the Wild. Rabbit Mifa. Oh, okay. I want a Rabbit Goron. Oh, yeah. That that's yeah. You know, the DK association yeah. is quite similar, so you know they're gonna go that. Right. I think also they could mix up the battles and the system to be a little bit more dungeon delving. Still have like the tactical gameplay, but go a little bit more into like, hey, this is a dungeon crawler type experience as opposed to just the same. My, my weakest, my biggest issue with Mario Bros. Rabbids is how segmented that game feels. Like, it feels like it was built like a chapter book, and I'd rather it feel like a more open-ended poem. Look, whether the Mario Plus Rabbids sequel is Zelda or not, I, I don't think it is. You think I, it's just be Mario again? Yeah, I think it'll just be Mario again. I like, think that they figure out a way to use the, the better character models. I think Nintendo finally loaned them the right models. <laughs> I think it's so funny that Mario plus Rabbids and Mario Odyssey came out so soon, so close to each other. And Mario Odyssey is like, wow, Mario looking fancy. He's looking fresh. He's got them new yeah. clothes, that cool hat. And then Mario plus Rabbids looks like he was carved out of clay. I mean, <laughs> regardless of, of what it ends up being, I, I hope that Davide is over there working on something super cool. He's got to be. I mean, I think that one has a high likelihood of coming this year. I, I put that at like a 80% chance of releasing. I, I Look, we're the opposite. You think everything's coming this year and I think nothing's coming this year. So, Hey, eternally optimistic and eternally concerned. Yeah. I think that's I think that's fair. Okay. Um, let's move to another surefire thing. Um, and that is going to be Axiom Verge 2. Now, this is Tom Happ doing work in the Metroidvania space. You love Axiom Verge 1. I, I think you would say that's a top tier Switch eShop indie. It is. The only bummer about that is that it's on every platform imaginable. Right. 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 You know, we have a similar instance to what you mentioned just earlier, but that game does music, story, exploration so well. Everything that makes a Metroidvania a good Metroidvania, this game does like awesome. Right. Like, how do you do a story that's like that cool in a game where. It's like pixelated and the environments all like don't like look super pretty. Like it's not the prettiest of games, but they figure out a way to make it super engaging. The power well, it's ups- it's about to get prettier. Yeah, the, well the power ups that you get as you keep going, the progression, I think that it's a masterful game. And you know, Axiom Verge 2 has a very high bar 
that, that it needs to meet? Like, will they be able to, to live up to the expectations that, you know, I have and that a lot of other people have? Because people do love it. It's not just me. Yeah. No, it's, it, I mean, it's critically well received. It sort of has, I'm going to say a cult following. It's just got like a genre following. Yeah, yeah for sure. And it, this one's been in development for a long time. So I, I have to imagine they've had plenty of work to, to put into it. Um, it's supposed to come out later this year. And yeah, I, I don't know. There's something about the title and the character that, like, I don't think it'll ever garner the same hype as, like, a Hollow Knight or, like, a new Celeste, but still, yeah, insane quality. Yeah. Look, when I first played Axiom Verge, like, it felt like what I felt like when I played Super Metroid for the first time. So mm -hmm. I, I, maybe that's another reason why, like, it resonates with me, like, so much, is because yeah. I get the exact same feeling from those games. Hits that, hits that nostalgia nerve a little bit. Um, for me, it's not necessarily a nostalgia nerve, it's just my favorite nerve. Mario Kart 9. <laughs> Mario Kart, it's coming up on time. It has been a long time since Mario Kart 8 initially released. Now, yes, Deluxe sells super well and did come out at Switch launch, but Mario Kart 8 as an original title has been out for a long, long, long time. And it is high time for a new Mario Kart. I think they definitely want one on Switch. There's been some rumblings that it could be the holiday title this year, and I think with what they did with some... Stop laughing. Some games are coming out, Gabe. <laughs> Paper Mario got announced and it's coming out. Cyberpunk is coming out. Last of Us Part 2 is coming out. The PS5 is coming out. There are sequels everywhere. Horizon Forbidden West. Halo Infinite. Mario Kart 9 is possible. <laughs> it is plausible, even. I just, look, we, we're not getting Breath of the Wild 2 and Mario Kart. Like No, 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 no. Not both. But it's possible that one of them does, in fact, drop this year. Look, I, I think Nintendo will have a major title. And I think merging Mario Kart even more towards the Nintendo Kart idea is where they'll go. I, they have nowhere else to go. Like, what else do you do? Like, there's so I mean, more, <laughs> just more tracks, same characters. Just, nobody wants more tracks, but no new characters. Actually. I want more tracks. No way. Um, well, yeah, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC, honestly. No, no. Okay, sure. Look, Mario Kart 9 comes up. Is it all the same? Like, do we get all these tracks and then more? Like, like where do you, like, no, need... that's the odd part is, like, they have delved through so many of the old tracks. Like, and you, I don't think you can start pulling from Mario Kart 8 and like, oh, the retro tracks are from Mario Kart 8. Like, Mount Wario is now a retro track. So what they do track-wise would be interesting. I think they come out with a lot of bigger tracks, new tracks. Um, you know, do they go back to the double dash mechanic, triple dash? I don't, I don't want that. Uh, could they expand, you know, the raceways a little bit? Maybe. The online's already pretty solid. It has the foundation. It just needs, yeah, new tracks, more characters, throw in some more Nintendo IP, make it as much of a Smash Bros. Ultimate, but now Mario Kart Ultimate as you can make it. That's another 15 to 20 million seller, I think for sure. Yeah, but the problem is that I think Deluxe is already pretty ultimate. <laughs> like, I, I guess that's the issue. Yeah, but but it's a Wii U game. The Switch definitely will get a Mario Kart. It will. Arguably already has one. <laughs> <sighs> another surefire game that is coming 2020, and we've heard that uh, Suda is really still at work and we're gonna make it happen is No More Heroes 3, one of the wildest franchises. I think in gaming, one of the weirdest franchises, and we had we had this. There's this great Switch Force. It's it's not even a joke, but it, I'm gonna call it a joke. Where we somehow thought that Travis Strikes Again was gonna be our most anticipated game of the year it released, and instead, like neither of us liked it that much at all. The game wasn't bad, but I don't know what we were thinking when we said that. It's because they they pitched it as something so much bigger. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, we did say that when we first saw, like, the first trailer with, like, Batman. And, right. Like, it, it was it was different than what it ended up being. It was, like, this top. And now, what we're getting now is what we thought we were getting then. And so my question is, do you have the same enthusiasm we had back then in 2018 for this now in 2020? I don't get burned on the stove twice. Uh, I'll say, like, but this is it. You're not going to get burned this time. It's, it's okay. I got burned bad enough last time that this time I'm going to look. If the gameplay comes out and, and it looks super cool, then then yeah, I mean, I'll jump on board. Um, you said it's one of the strangest franchises. It's coming from one of the weirdest minds. Suda51, for better or worse, it, it is insane in the best possible way. I, I, I love his work. But yeah, I, I, I think it looks really pretty. Um, I think it's going to be really quirky. I think a boss-driven game with hopefully a little bit smoother controls will be really nice. Beam katanas are cool. Chasing around all sorts of insanity and side jobs in the game should be fun. It's one of those projects that does it, is it capable of transitioning into 2020 really well? And that's where I'm a little iffy. I don't know why we were so hyped on it when it first got announced. Maybe that year was a little bit slower. Yeah. But... 
I still I still have a lot of passion for this project, and I, and I hope they are able to deliver something, you know, that isn't just like, I mean, we have Deadly Premonition 2 coming out, which is not on our <laughs> list, but that to me sits in the, hey, it's not going to be great, but it's going to be great. I hope this is great and is also great. Yeah, I, I hope so too. I mean, No More Heroes 1 and 2 are awesome, and No More Heroes 2, like specifically like with, with the Wii, like with the, the controls and stuff, mm -hmm. I had a really good time with that. I just love boss rush. I love when you get to go against, and I think they're epic battles. They have so much fanfare and fireworks, and if Suda can do that and deliver on Switch, I would love to see him do a little, like, uh, Kojima and be like, oh, you have to play this one handheld because of some, like, weird, like, Travis, like, loses his hands, so he has to, like, you have to oh. give him your hands to play handheld. Guys, he means, like, that one boss battle. He doesn't mean the whole yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, not the whole game, just one boss <laughs> battle. I just want, yeah, do something crazy. I like that a lot. Um, I also like Crash Bandicoot a lot. I think the Insane Trilogy is one of the best values on Switch. And Activision has been pretty good about supporting the platform, so when you hear big rumors about a new Crash Bandicoot either remake or wholly new game, I think that comes to Switch. And it sounds like it's coming this year. We had new Crash Bandicoot merch that was recently, um, published is the right word, put, put out. Sure. And I got an interesting package. I think Crash Bandicoot is coming this year. Not on Switch, it's not. No? No! How, it, dude, it, how long did you have to wait for, for the for the Insane Trilogy to come to Switch? Not, not that long. It was long. It was months. I think I think Activision gets their pipeline in a row, in, in order, and I think they're able to push it. Yeah, uh, again, we're... Like, the, the, Switch, the, the Switch sales this year have been insane, Gabe. I know you've been gone a while, but that system has sold many millions of units, and they would be silly to not want to capitalize on a demographic that would be ripe for a new Bandicoot bash. I, look, it, it'd be great. It'd be great, but if history has taught us anything, is that even when companies say the games are day and date, they're not day and date. Gabe, you are becoming the horse of this channel. Nay, no, nay, it, but, no, nay but seriously, everything. Seriously, like, these these developers all say, you know, hey, it's coming day and date, and then, like, it's coming, and they're like, oh, wait, no, guys. You'll get switched a little bit later. Like, so, if that's, that's what, changing. If that's what, I, look, unless you know something, I don't. Unless that's what history has shown me. So that's just what it I has just, shown us. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think Insane Trilogy is fantastic. Even if Activision, I, well, what I hope is, I hope that with this new Crash game, they just honor the formula, but update the mechanics, update the graphics. I don't want to see Crash Bandicoot running around in a 3D platformer. Some people, I don't want Mario some Odyssey people Crash. See some people want to see that. I know, but I would just love for them to keep it. That, that gameplay still holds up, and it shocks me that it does. But that's still such a fun style of gameplay it's it's very difficult for some people that didn't grow up with those games Just oh it is very it's very difficult <laughs> even now that station in crash one yeah. where like the bridge is like falling apart in the sky level ooh, that was like a 45 minute stage for me yeah no no i mean i love crash i hope there's a new crash game in development like i really i mean i there, think there is I, think, I really think there is yeah i think so too um we also think that there is a world ends with you 2 coming this year and there's a lot of there's a lot more than scuttle butt around this. There's like a whole body of scuttle. Scuttle arms, scuttle neck, scuttle legs. Square Enix filed a trademark. We've heard rumors from reliable sources. It is the key art for an upcoming anime event. And it just makes sense. Square is a big supporter of Switch. Okay. World Ends With You is on the platform already. It's a very unique, interesting RPG. It's a JRPG that I like. Here I am. So this game is really exciting. It's about time I change my tone. I think this does happen this year. Like, like, I think this is something that fully seems like is about to happen. So, is it a sixty dollars game? Yeah, I think so. If it's a, if it, yeah, if it's a full on sequel, they made it, they make it bigger, you know, better in every conceivable I, I, way. Yeah, I, I love the 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 stylus pin mechanics of getting your different attacks and setting that all up. Do they require the touch screen? Because remember, that game can, cannot be played on Doc Mode, the original. Yeah, the original. No, I think I think they're moving on from that. I think that this okay. you can play. In it's a joystick-based combat system. Yeah, that, the amount of people that have stylus on, on Switch is not big. Like, it's not a large amount of players. So Yeah, and drawing with your finger is yeah, really no, hard. Let me yeah. tell you, I've tried Animal Crossing. I've seen it. <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, I don't know what it is about that game that appeals to me so much more than some of the more the traditional hair. JRPGs. The hair. <laughs> The hair. <laughs> uh, I think it's like honestly, this is a weird comparison, but the game reminds me of Splatoon. Like, there's all like the the pins and the buttons and like the city, and it just has a very like it's got a fun. There obviously is like end of the world insanity, but there's a very fun charm to it. I feel, and the combat's very active. Yeah, I, and I hope that they're able to retain that, even if they drop the styles to touchscreen. I hope they're able to retain the activeness. Speaking of Splatoon, it's time for Gabe's legendary pick of the day. This doesn't fall on our normal list. This is Gabe's more pie in the sky pick. Throw it ass. Zach, Splatoon 2 got released a very long time ago. We had the Octo expansion, right? And that was great. 
but mm -hmm. that was just an expansion. one of the coolest trailers Nintendo's ever put out. Yes, one of the coolest games Nintendo has ever put out. I love Splatoon 2, and I think it's high time ready for Splatoon 3. And before you say anything, I don't, I don't want a a sequel that isn't a sequel. I don't want a side Ooh. project. I don't want a spin off. Ooh. No, I want Splatoon 3, Zach. Okay. Look, what it, what what makes Splatoon 3 3? A new kind of crustacean enters the arena. <sighs> Look. Uh, bigger and more, more colors. Yeah, bigger, and more colors. Yeah, uh, uh, start doing some. I mean, there's already pastel colors. I don't know neon colors. They got it all. Yeah, they have every. God, yeah, they do have everything. But you know, a single player story that's like way more like story based could be like cool. You know, so, mm -hmm. some interesting cutscenes. I feel like you can go bigger as far as that goes. The multiplayer is already on point. Here's how you do the multiplayer. You stop making everything so limited. You let people play what they want when they want. You don't do any of that. That's what stuff. makes Splatoon Splatoon, though. No, I know. It's on a schedule. It's like why Animal Crossing is so successful. It's on a schedule that you don't control. <laughs> Nintendo fans <laughs> love that stuff. They love being told what to do. The, not this one. No, I'm cool. Let, let me let me play whatever modes I want when I want, man. <laughs> like I, I do think it's time for a new Splatoon. I am in the camp of like a, a spinoff feels more appropriate because I don't know what you do to make Splatoon 3 different than Splatoon 2. Except more weapons, more clothes, more yeah. modes. I mean, that's that's what the sequel for every shooter is, right? Like, there's a Call of Duty. Yeah. There's a Call of Duty every year, and man, it's still, you know, weapons, and, and a lot of those weapons are the same weapons over and over. So, yeah. if you can find creative ways to do that, different abilities, uh, things of that nature, and yeah, I think you got. I mean, it. I'm all for it. Yeah, be set. It's gonna happen at some point. Uh, what another one that seems inevitable, and I know a lot of you've been waiting for us to mention this, is Monster Hunter Switch. Monster Hunter Switch makes just as much sense or more than any game on this list because that franchise has sold so well on Nintendo platforms, specifically Nintendo handhelds. They released the Generations port on Switch. There is no original. Monster Hunter World took that franchise to a far larger audience. You have to imagine at some point, like on PS5 and Series X, we get Monster Hunter World 2. Iceborne was incredibly cool. I think just like Breath of the Wild 2, Monster Hunter on Switch is going to be a mixture, an amalgamation of what Monster Hunter is to Nintendo fans and what Monster Hunter is to new fans. Capcom has some unannounced games for Switch this year. Could it be? Look, Monster Hunter World, as we know it, and it was a very successful game. It sold way better than, than anyone thought it would. It sold better than that franchise has ever sold. It, it was the biggest Monster Hunter game ever, both sales-wise and scope-wise. And mm -hmm. you even like that. You don't like Monster Hunter too much. Huh? I love Monster Hunter World. <laughs> I know you do. I don't like Generations all that much. Okay, though. cool. Look, so that game did this, and it wouldn't have done any of that without Nintendo. So I think it would be criminal to not have a... Give them one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, For they, sure. They need something, man. And, you know, there are a section of people that thought that, you know, World wasn't what they wanted for Monster Hunter. They, they liked the other version better. Right. So I, I don't know if, if Capcom goes and appeases that. It's a much smaller player base, but there's still you know a lot of those people out there. Uh, but it's a hardcore player base, and, and like the question is like once you go to a farther level, can you go back without it feeling like a, a a step backwards? And I think that in this specific case, they have the audience that they could. If they just delivered a more polished, more exciting Nintendo tracked Monster Hunter, I don't think many people would complain. And and that kind of scares me just because I did love World so much. But like. Look, the, the, the install base, it's time. The install base is huge. Capcom can drop this and get this to sell millions and millions of copies. Yeah, oh yeah. There's no doubt about that. I fully agree with you. I just feel like something like World is just way too ambitious to do on the Switch hardware. And the Outer Worlds, The Witcher 3, Breath of the Wild. Yeah, but one, one of those that, that you mentioned, the port isn't super great. And you know, yeah, I guess that's why it would have to be like a mixture. It would have to be like limited, but I think that they do advance the formula a bit. Yeah, you have I to. Hope. Yeah, you have to because you did Worlds. Like, you, you can't make that leap and then expect to go sell the, the other thing again. I mean, I agree with you as far as that goes. I think we get one, uh, you know, in the next couple of years. Oh, yeah. I think that could be a phenomenal holiday title, even though, you know, it's not like a Nintendo franchise. That is one that could really amp the Switch up. And I think could be a system seller for, for I mean, if you're already not sold on the system... Uh, I heard the dwindling number of people that aren't sold on Switch. It has to be pretty small. I heard point, that people that want Switch consoles can't even get them right now. So you don't want to sell too right. many more systems right now. Relax. <laughs> yeah. Um, a game that would be a system seller for me is going to be uh, a new SteamWorld title. I love all of them so much. Image Informed back in March of this year said they were hard at work on the new title. It was about a year and a half between SteamWorld Dig 2 and SteamWorld Quest. So there is a high likelihood that that game releases this fall. 
where do they go, Gabe? Image Inform, I think, is one of the best indie developers on Switch, and with their new Thunderful publishing label, they, they put out some incredible titles. Even their downhill biking game is super awesome. Is it SteamWorld Dig 3? Is it Heist 2? Is it a wholly new genre? Because the success of SteamWorld, to me, is that they've found a way to give them any genre and gameplay style, and they make it fun. I think there's there's one big genre that, you know, would be obvious that, that it's the next Car racing. <laughs> no. Sports. No. Point and click. No, a hardcore fighting game. Hardcore shooter of some kind is what I would say. A hardcore, sh like a first person shooter? Yeah, right? Because they're, look, they're small. We love them over there. But when they made a card game, a mixture of a card game and an RPG, and they made that work somehow, yes, I trust them to do literally anything. And, you know, shooters. That game are, is so good. Oh, sh is so good. Shooters are the most popular franchise, right? I, I don't know why that would be. So, I, I, you know, like I said, we love them. We don't know what they're working on, you know, but I, look. They're so nice. Ugh. Yeah, no, no. We, we, we've, we've dealt with them. Like, we, we like them a lot, like, as people. <laughs> okay, so a, a, sh a first person shooter with, like, roguelike type mechanics where you're still, like, diving deep and cutting, yeah. kind of collecting things. Like, you know, cutting through the earth, collecting gems and things like that, upgrading your character. Yes. I could also see them doing a, a Enter the Gungeon style game, which I guess is kind of SteamWorld Dig already, but like modifying that to be a little bit more. Yeah, shooter, shooter makes sense. While those shooter ideas and Enter the Gungeon style like stuff sounds cool, the probably most likely thing is that it is like SteamWorld Dig to, uh, 3. You but, think? Yeah, I'd be fine with that too. So, I mean. I think they could also do Heist 2. Heist 2 would be, I mean. I want Quest 2, I just know that's not happening. They're no, not going back to back car, but I love no. that game so much. That's my favorite one they've done. You know, I think there's an option that they also do a more story driven game because they experimented that with that in Quest, giving us the, the most realized version of their steampunk robotic characters. So some sort of more story driven adventure. I mean, there's an opportunity for them to do something, I think like Little Nightmares inside style that I think could be really cool, where it's almost like a puzzle platformer, but with a story emphasis instead of like the, you know, dig down and, and you know, economy emphasis that the past games have had. Yeah, I mean, they like doing things differently, right? I'll take but it, whatever it is. Quest w was a, a good indication that, you know, they don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over. So I don't know, maybe they do a shooter, maybe they do a sports game, like you said. I mean, who knows what they do? Steam World Party, it's Mario Party with them. Hey, whatever they do, I'm there for it. I also want to throw out the idea, and this is very unlikely, but Nintendo has crossed over with some really cool indie developers. Ooh. What do you give them? I'm just saying you Metroid. merge SteamWorld with like Mario Metro or Metroid or Donkey Metroid. Kong or something. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Ooh, okay, Dude. before I get too hot and bothered here, <laughs> let's go with my pick, which again is going to get me hot and bothered. My kind of pie in the sky is Overcooked 3, which I know isn't that crazy because inevitably I think Team 17 does another Overcooked. Overcooked 2 is so good. I've been playing a lot of it lately. The cooperative elements are so fun. It is a great bond building game. It's a fantastic <laughs> title. It's okay. so good. They've released so much DLC. I think they've stopped the DLC, all the chefs, all the recipes, and now maybe boost the graphics a bit, maybe increase the options, maybe give us some new gameplay styles. They, they supported that game so well. It's one of the best values, one of the best games of the last decade. It is, it is literally one of the best games of the last decade. Man, shout out to Zach building building bonds over Overcooked 2. That, that, Overcooked 2 is a great game for you to play with anybody. Not only that, but that game sold so well. Like those yeah. games sell well. Like yeah, people love them. It's inevitable. We're getting one. We 100. percent I don't even know how you upgrade it, but it doesn't even need that much. It's just keep the ideas creative. Maybe boost the graphics a bit. Overcooked 3 is gonna be so good. That's I also love speedrunners too. Okay, stop cheating. You get one. I haven't, I haven't pitched you on my great Nintendo crossover. Okay, I know Steam World crossover, that'd be great, but Speedrunners plus Donkey Kong, I think that's what Nintendo needs to do. Work with <laughs> Tiny Build. So then you get like DK and Dixie and K. Rule Racing. Come on, man. That, that's seriously, that's my heart game right there. That's the one that I've made from it deep inside my soul. How's Cranky gonna race? <laughs> He's just gonna use his freaking cane to launch himself forward, man. If you guys have a dream sequel or any sequel that you really want to see, let us know in the comments down below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed our, this is like a throwback. It's like back in the day. Me and you sitting here talking games, yeah. long form discussion, hanging out. Hit that like button if you enjoy the nostalgia and if you enjoy or excited for any of these games. Man, if even half of these come out, it's a great 2020. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we get one or two of them. Yeah. <laughs> Stop being a horse game. There's more sequels that we didn't even talk about. Paper Mario Origami King, technically a franchise sequel. Bayonetta 3 is supposed to come out, technically a sequel. 
Shen Megami Tensei, what's up with you, man? Where you at? Where are we at? They've had they've had a trailer. That's the biggest bait and tease ever. Uh, Persona 5 could be a sequel on Switch. It's, I mean, it's it's a game already. It is a game already. Yeah. Is a sequel not a sequel if it's already released? I mean, I guess. Well, I guess it's time to go. So thanks so much for watching, buddy. Make sure you're staying safe and staying healthy, staying smart out there. I love you a lot. Gabe loves you too. Until next time, have a fantastic freaking day. Thanks again. Switch Force, out.